Hello and welcome to the Elevate Podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Nowakowski. I am a salon owner, educator, mindset, and leadership coach that helps salon owners go from overwhelmed and burnt out to motivated and empowered. It is my mission to help you systemize your business, generate more profit, and create a career that you are absolutely in love with. Join us every week to learn about the small shifts you can make to elevate your business regarding mindset, marketing, social media, business systems, and so much more. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Elevate Podcast. I'm so excited for today's episode. We are going to be diving into personal branding, finding your fame factor, and standing out against your competition. And we are going to be speaking with the co-owners of Azari Studio, and they are experts in branding, marketing, publicity, and coaching. So if you want to take a moment to introduce yourselves and kind of tell us who you are and how you both have gotten started in what you do. Yeah, so, um, well, my name is Pascal and Kate. (laughs) This is Kate and we're the co-founders of Azori Studio and there's a bit of a story behind why we joined forces. I come from a background of working in branding. I worked for a branding agency and we work with all sorts of um, sort of high, main high street brands, ones that you'll probably know like L'Oreal, The White Company, Ralph Lauren, Jack Will. So I kind of came from that experience working with more sort of high street business brands And then I kind of ventured off and thought, oh, I'm going to do this on my own now and let's see how this goes. And met Kate because I needed a photo shoot. Although when I met Kate, realised that actually you were more brand strategy. It was so much more than photography. We were aligned on so many more things. Kate is a genius when it comes to personal branding. And yeah, we kind of we joined forces and I can go into that a little bit more and why we believe that we had to join the two together but I'll stop talking and I'll let Kate introduce herself a bit more as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I'm Kate um so my background is personal branding photography and I've done that for gosh like probably 13 14 years I worked for somebody else for six months and thought no I can't do this so I with all my savings made this little log cabin studio I was like, which is what I'm in now And I was like, right, okay, I've got to make this work. And I just fell in love with personal branding because I love talking about business. I could talk about the cows come home. And I think that was the thing for me. It was like, I wasn't just a photographer. I loved talking to people about their business and how to kind of really go beyond just taking pretty pictures. For me, it was taking pictures with purpose. So my background is I've helped an array of people. So from companies and brands, so Jennifer Lopez fragrances, through to like celebrities, to then just sort of CEOs and um, business owners planning their photo shoot. And then what I would realize is that a lot of people didn't actually have a brand. And that's, I was like, hang on a second, we can't just do a photo it, it has to mean something. It has to tell a story. And that's kind of probably comes back around to the reason why we joined forces with mm-hmm. Pascal. And I'll let you take over from here. Yeah, I think just to add to that, for us, when we got talking, I found going from working with like biz, big businesses where we, we built their marketing campaigns and then it would go through to launching. And obviously, because they're already really well established, it would just take off to going to working for more sort of startup early year business owners it's like I would do the same strategies but I didn't it just didn't have the same effect and I was thinking how can we get these same results for smaller business owners and get them to that kind of level you know what's the missing piece and that's where when we you know we've had so many conversations where we really believe that the the key is like sandwiching it together weaving the two together personal branding and business branding and making sure that you're really becoming the forefront of your business and becoming that driving force because that's what's going to take it to the next level you know when you look at some of the biggest beauty brands in the world today like Charlotte Tilbury, Rihanna, why are they so successful? I've worked for L'Oreal and yet I've seen how these brands have essentially taken over and why is that? It's because of personal branding so yeah that's that's really why we're here and what we're all about and why we're so passionate about helping other other ladies implement those same strategies to to elevate their business, essentially. 
Wondering what it's like to work with me? Want to know what I've tried and tested in my salon and how you can create more freedom as a salon owner? I'm excited to offer an exciting way to get my coaching lessons to you in our podcast subscription. The Elevate Insider is an inside look into my coaching calls and includes exclusive content from me. These episodes contain coaching lessons and the exact steps you need to take to grow your salon. Plus, you'll receive special PDFs and supporting documents so that you can easily take action. To learn more and to become an insider, visit opulentbeautypro.com backslash insider or find an episode of the Elevate Insider on Apple Podcasts. You know, I think there's so many key components to personal branding. And I feel like as I scroll through social media, and I really look at the salons I'm working with their websites, and really everything that they do. And I don't think a lot of them understand what the key components of a personal brand are. So you both work with really kind of helping people develop what this is. What would you say your like primary key components are when it comes to creating a personal brand and the most important key components that really kind of bring everything together and create that successful brand that everyone really is seeking to do and create for themselves? I think from a fundamental point of view, it's it's who you are as a person and then understand who your target market is and then finding that sweet spot in between. And I think if you can do that, you can nail it. And I think with personal branding, it's not just, you know, we say this a lot, don't we? It's not just showcasing every part of your life in terms of what you're eating for breakfast that morning. It's about being strategic in the way that you do it and in the way that you show up. I think as well, we, you know, you talk about, we talk a lot about um, bridging the gap between, like Kate just said, your dream audience, really getting to the core and understanding who you are as a person. Yeah. And that's where we really do kind of go into this whole fame factor piece. And we call it the fame factor effect, because it's really getting clear on that one thing that you want to be known for in your space. And what's so beautiful about personal branding is there is space for everyone when you implement that when you're genuinely authentic to yourself when you try to avoid scrolling on social media look taking too much inspiration from other people it can be even subconsciously even if we don't think we're copying we tend to mirror the people that we're consuming and the people that are around us whereas when you really get clear on your personal brand you build that clarity you build that confidence with who you are understanding who you are and then knowing how to then infuse that into your content um, into your networking it doesn't just have to be on social media into your website your business it you're just going to be so much more effective with your with your personal branding with the impact that you make with your business and there is room for everyone when you do it because everyone has a unique story everyone has their own unique spin on things and you know again going back to charlotte tilbury and rihanna both be, they're very they're essentially t- you know competitors but they're so different in their approach because of who they are and they've infused that into their business. And obviously that's a bigger example, but it happens on a smaller scale too. I love talking to both of you because I could just like see the excitement and you like, you light up when you're talking about this topic. So it's like, you can just see that you're like in your right <laughs> path, right? You know, and, and there's a couple of things that you like touched on and you touched on like scrolling, subconsciously wanting to mimic the people that you find that you are attracted to or that are doing the things that you want to do. And it's so funny that you said that because I literally just did an unfollow like free. And I unfollowed anyone that made me feel a certain way or anyone that I felt the urge to like want to try to be like, because I'm like, I can't have them in my headspace because that's pulling me away from who I am in my authentic self, right? Which I think everyone should do. Plus the comparison game also is something that isn't healthy. But when it comes to personal branding, I find in the beauty industry, the issue that a lot of hairstylists and salon owners have, you know, you talked about niching down and really finding your specialty, right? I feel like so many salon owners and stylists are afraid not to be appealing to everybody because they're so afraid that they're not going to have enough clientele to fill the one niche that possibly they're interested in, right? Like they don't want to turn down any clients because essentially it's a form of revenue. So how do you like move past that hurdle or like get somebody to 
really kind of commit to niching down and really kind of focus on what they truly love so they can black out the noise and not get distracted about by the things that possibly won't serve them or their personal brand. So the more that you niche down, you can charge more because of that. So I'm just trying to think, for example, there is, I don't know why I keep seeing it, the toupee queen, and she kind of does these makeovers on men. And they are absolutely amazing. And I'm obsessed. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with watching this. But she can now charge a fortune because she does this one thing and she does it really, really well. And she is known for being incredible at that. Whereas if she was just a run-of-the-mill hairdresser who just did a bit of colouring here, cutting, did a toupee that... You wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be mentioning her right now because her whole brand is the toupee queen. So that is the power of niching down. It does really allow you to become the expert. People will listen to what you've got to say. You become the thought leader, the authority in that space. You can charge so much more. And I mean, there's, I mean, Pascal, you probably add to this, but there are just so many benefits to niching down from your messaging point of view as well. It's easier to be able to speak to one person as opposed to, everybody if you're speaking to and it doesn't necessarily need to be demographics and we say this a lot to our clients it doesn't need to be you know a certain age or a certain gender sometimes it can come down to their psychographics so where is their mind at what are their fears what are their dreams what their motivations and sometimes it's tapping into that that can be the differentiator the niche doesn't have to be the demographics in terms of yeah are they a woman? Are they a man? Are they yeah. 30? Or I mean, sometimes that can help. And the, and the more specific you can get, the better. Because obviously, if you were speaking to a mum as opposed to a 18-year-old girl, the, the whole language would be completely different because, you know, their their issues are very, very different. And that's, that's the benefit of um, niching down. I think as well, just to add to that, I think that when you build a personal brand as well, when you niche down, you're hopefully niching down to something that you genuinely really love and you're more passionate about. And we actually had this conversation with one of our clients today, didn't we? She thought she wanted to go to for realtors. She was talking about she thought she wanted to go for realtors. When it actually kind of came down to the crunch, she realized that she's really passionate about wellness. So it's like, well, that's your dream client. That's the person you want walking into the room. If you're kind of spreading yourself a bit thin and working with people with different niches, are you even going to enjoy your job as much as you would if you were like really specific with your message, niching down? You're just going to, like Kate said, you're going to be an expert in your space, but you're genuinely going to love every single day of what you're doing. It doesn't necessarily have to be as niche as I'm working with this industry. Like it can be a type of person but if you know what they're in, if you're niching down on their interests, what kind of person they are, you're basically creating a community of people that are basically your best friends that you really love to work with. And, you know, if someone was just to walk into the room right now and had a set of problems and you knew that you could help them and you were excited to help them, that's also another benefit of niching down because you're just going to enjoy what you do even more. That's going to pay off because people will see that. They'll see that in you. They'll recommend you. It's just this snowball knock-on effect that is so much more powerful than if you were like, oh, I'm just going to, I'll help this person and I'll help that person. Sure, we can all help, like branding, we can help so many different industries and so many niches. We can, in theory, but no, we like to work with people in the beauty space and people in the wellness space because we are passionate about that. So it just makes your, your whole, you know, Every day it makes it so much more enjoyable. You enjoy your content more. You enjoy creating more. You enjoy working with these people. So I think that's another thing. That's why it it pays off. Speaking about niching, and we talked about when you niche down, you can really position yourself as an expert Mm -hmm. and really be known for that you know, area that you niche down to. So going into that, you have something called the fame factor, correct? How would you define fame factor and how do you help people find that fame factor? It's funny. Sometimes it can take people like an afternoon. (laughs) Sometimes it can take people a lot longer because it really is. We kind of call it a bit of a therapy session, don't we? Yeah. And it does go back to really understanding who your dream customer is. So I think that's kind of point number one, really get clarity on that. And sometimes that can evolve. You know, we think someone's the right option and then you start working with them and you kind of think actually no I didn't really enjoy that 
So that can take a bit of time, but also understanding yourself. And then it's really finding what are the common grounds between you and your dream customer and where can you kind of meet on that? It's those little touch points that you can then weave into your content. And also it might be that you just have a specific approach or angle on something in your industry that is perhaps different from other people in your space. Maybe you hear of other people within your in the beauty industry that believe in a certain approach or method and you don't believe in that. So then you go forward creating messaging and content and building your personal brand around this different approach. So that's also another way you can do it. Um, there's actually a few ways to build your fame factor. There's almost too many to go into, but just, just as a couple. So there's a unique angle or myth buster. There's also, you know, your brand story is such a good way. You know, um, hopefully lots of you will know who Jenna Kutcher is. She's like this online business coach, bit of a sensation in the in the business online business world. And she's become really known for this humble beginnings of a $300 Craigslist camera all the way through to a six to seven like million dollar empire. And you'll, you'll notice it now, if you go on her Instagram, if you go on her website, her masterclasses, she will literally talk about that story until the cows come home because she's, it's all part of her personal brand that she was just the girl next door and now she's the girl, right? And she's so, yeah. Yeah, and she does that in a way that, She's doing it because she's trying to say to everybody else, if I can do it, so can you. And I think that's why her story is so powerful. And I actually think that's a lot of the case with the brand stories. Yeah, you know, and I think the problem that I see too, when it comes to like really digging into personal brands, I feel like it's a self-confidence thing where people just feel like they have nothing to offer or they're not unique and they're not special, that they're just like everyone else, especially in the beauty industry, because there it, it is, I don't want to say it's oversaturated, but there are so many of us doing the same things. And I feel like people really struggle with finding that uniqueness that they have for themselves. So when you think about creating a personal brand, is there like a certain audit or a certain suggestion where people can really start digging into who they are and how they can find their uniqueness when it comes to this area of their business there's again we've got like a whole list we've actually got a workbook which we can um we can give to to you to put the, in the notes of this podcast but one of the things can be genuinely like your life story and the way we sometimes do this with our clients will will actually get them to split up their life into columns so sort of early years mid years late years however you want to divide that out and start writing down any notable experiences or observations or anything that really made you who you are you know we can all I'm sure everyone we get this a lot people say to us I don't there's nothing unique about me there's nothing special about me the fact that you're even on this earth tells me and you've lived a life tells me you are special it's just you need to go and dig deep and find those little golden nuggets that you can then start sprinkling around your business so that could be things like even just down to your cultural upbringing right I'm sure our upbringing over here in England in the UK is very different to yours there's just going to be slightly different nuances there and we will individually attract our own unique audience because of our upbringing you know, me and Kate, we're from the same area, but we both have very different upbringings. So that can play a big part in it. You know, it can be things that you struggled with, but then overcame. It might be that you're still going through those things. For me, confidence was a, has been a big, big part of my journey growing my personal brand. Because when I was back at school, I wouldn't speak in front of the class. So now I weave that a lot into my personal brand because I'm saying, look, I was so nervous. I couldn't ever speak in public. I begged my parents not to, you know, not to put me in front of the class, take me out of assignment so I didn't have to do that. And now I speak on stage and I speak on social media. So that's something that I talk about because it's relevant to the industry as well. It's re relevant to what I do. So there's going to be so many little things, you know, thinking of the beauty industry, were you the kind of girl that, you know, had one of those beautiful little um, beauty kits and you were doing your makeup as a kid. You know, it's thinking about all these little touch points throughout your life that you can kind of weave back into what you're doing now. And it's those 
pivot points that has made you the person you are now, we can all look back in our life and go, oh, that's why I am the way I am. And if you're struggling, I say, ask your friends and family, like ask, you know, what was I like as a kid? And be like, oh, that makes sense, you know? So there's so many questions that you can ask. And when you when you kind of break it out over a timeline, you can actually start to piece the bits together quite nicely. And then you can kind of go, oh, that, that relates to, to what I do now. Of course, I'm, of course, I'm in this line of industry now because, you know, it makes sense because of X, Y, and Z. It's amazing, actually, how much when we dive in with our clients, how much the early years are fundamental, actually, to <laughs> everything else they end up doing, especially like parental influence, maybe things that they've experienced at school, things that teachers have said, teach that other, like other pupils have said. And the other thing I would say, because we always say it is like a therapy session doing one of our, we have so many exercises we get people to do and they absolutely love it because it's just an interesting thing from a, like a, from a psychology point of view. But I think the exercise that I always get people to do is ask themselves why five times. So why do you love to do what you do? And then it's saying, but why, but why, but why? Because then you get to the, the real core of it. And that normally is, that can be a really good basis for your brand story. I love that. That's a great tool, actually. Just keep on digging deep with the question yeah. why. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about personal branding, how is not having a personal brand really hurting somebody's bottom line when it comes to wanting to build their business? I mean, it's such, we've, we've actually got some charts and some graphs to show you. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier on in the podcast, you know, even just from like a monetary point of view, but just to look at money for, for a moment, it is incomparable when you see brands that have been around for decades, literally decades since our grandparents were still kids, you know, who are still there, tracking on, versus brands that have come out in the last sort of 10 years who have got a personal brand. So when I think of like makeup brands that don't have a face and they'll maybe use celebrities and things like that to try and kind of take them over the edge. And we're all kind of thinking, hmm, yeah, but how much are they getting paid for that? We don't really believe it because I think as humans, we've become so much more savvy now. We've got Google at our fingertips. We know when someone's being genuine or not. We know when someone's being paid for something versus people like Charlotte Tilbury. I know I keep referencing them, but they're just such a good example where we genuinely believe in her and we love her products because she has been at the forefront of her business all of this time. We respect her. She was an industry specialist, you know, and she's gone on to build products that she felt were missing from the industry. Same as Rihanna. Yes, she was a pop star. So it's maybe not quite as, but Charlotte Tilbury is a good example from the perspective that she wasn't really anybody initially and she became somebody. But the whole point of influence is, you know, we believe in them. We feel like we know, like, and trust them. So we're more likely to believe in what they're doing. And the fact that they're the forefront of their business, we're so much more inclined to then buy from them and invest in them. You know, Rihanna did all of the different shades of foundations for shades that didn't exist yet. So they all had their purpose for being. So it's just so much more powerful. I mean, without one, I don't really know where to, it's just, even on a small scale, like for us personally, you know, we haven't got tens of thousands of followers. However, building a personal brand has been, uh, it just, it does make the difference of people knowing you and then they just, and taking them over the line to to trust you and buy from you. It makes all the difference. We've personally seen it, haven't we? Yeah, and I think also there is so much noise out there. There is, you know, you're bombarded with all these different adverts. Like, what product do you trust? You see these mascaras and then you realise actually they're sort of false lashes. So you, you kind of end up in this sort of paralysis analysis state. So I think what people are now really seeking is connection. So if they see someone who's similar, they're going through the similar problems, maybe they're the founder and there she was acne. So they suffered with terrible acne themselves and that's something that you suffer with. And then they come out with a beauty line that is specifically for acne. You are 100% going behind because you know that that is their problem and they are hell bent on finding a solution for it. So rather than it feeling like with an REL, you kind of think, oh my gosh, there's like a board of men there. Not that, you know, it's nothing to do with 
but it's it's just the idea that they're doing it from like a profit point of view rather than caring about the end user. I think when you've got a person behind it, you can really translate that message of genuinely caring about your product or your service. Um, and I think that is an incredible way to to stand out and, and to connect with your ideal customers. One person that just pops into my mind that you will um, kind of like sparked is Kylie Jenner, like with her yes. lip kits. Yeah. Literally, she was her brand and the face of her brand. And she built a billion dollar company off of just loving to do makeup. And mm-hmm. it was really her who created this line and is it's her image and her personal brand that actually sold it to where it is today. Another thing too, you know, you talked about, you touched base on, on like not having a lot of followers, right? Or not having a ton of followers. And I think a lot of people get caught up on that as well. I don't think you need a, a million followers. I think you need, you know, a thousand good followers who connect to who you are as a person. So how do you feel like, building that really strong connection through social media is beneficial and what do you do to suggest on on like maybe some suggestions on how to do that because I feel like people get lost in the lack of engagement and they get caught up on those numbers and I feel like social media has so much to do with you know branding and whatnot because that's really what people right they're putting their brand out on social media that's how we're attracting our audience Of course. Yeah. I think what's really important to remember, first of all, is that if we've got to remember social media as a tool, personal branding has always been a thing. It's become a buzzword, you know, the past kind of year or so, because suddenly everyone, you know, everyone's talking about it. But it's because of social media and it's because people are seeing the impact and the power of it. But it's always been there. The most successful business owners kind of taking it like back a little bit even when you look at like Richard Branson he you know, uh, founder of Virgin I genuinely believe the reason his business is so successful and he's become such an empire is when you look into his story from the very early years of him founding that business he was always at the forefront always building a personal brand and that was before social media was even a thing he was out there he was doing those interviews he was in the newspapers he was just using those forms of marketing or PR as a platform to build his personal brand. You know, we tend to build our personal brand more in terms of like events, networking, workshops, social media is kind of like next thing on our list, isn't it? But I think that's just something to remember that the followers don't necessarily always mean everything. It doesn't mean that if you don't have followers, you don't have a personal brand. There are so many ways that you can build that. I don't know if you wanna add anything to that, Kate. Yeah, I think the whole idea is you want to build your core of raving fans. So you don't mm. want the people who are sort of meh. They're not impo- they're not going to buy from you and you don't want them there. They're not going to be engaging with your content. So actually, I would say focus on the people who just love what you do because that's where you build a community. And when you have a community, that's when it just changes everything because you get the feedback from people. And I think you just don't want to dilute it. You know, you want your message to be strong. You want to really connect with those people. You were talking about networking and events and things like that. And I think we're really starting to shift back into that, especially like after COVID. And I, again, I, social media is there, but I also think that people are craving that connection, like you both had said. So how do people carry their personal brand into, you know, events and social scenarios so that you know they can really make sure that they're consistent across the board with who they are and what they do I think it goes from everything from the way that you kind of show up so from the visual point of view so everything needs to feel cohesive there is someone that we've been following for a little while and her style was very much bohemian she was by a beach with all these sort of palm trees and she was wearing sort of floaty outfits and then all of a sudden she sort of switched her brand and she was quite city-esque yeah corporate and it was a bit of a shock it was a bit like oh gosh I'm not it it felt a little bit disjointed and I'm not sure where I sort of sit now as a follower like what what am I what am I gonna see next so I think it's about creating this feeling that the people are very safe and they're going to be used to it you want to build that consistency and not just in the way that you kind of show up also in what you're saying and that's why we say with the fame factor it's so important you have just one topic that you're talking about because You might be sick of hearing your own voice and talking about the same thing over and over again, but that's the thing that people 
you're going to drive that message home and it's the thing that you're going to be remembered for. So Mm -hmm. I think don't be afraid of having like one, I say one look and one sort of message and just keep talking about that over and over and over again, because, you know, you might have a follower that's been following you for five years and you might have a follower that's only followed you for five minutes and they might not know anything about you. So you kind of have to just imagine that you're, yeah, you just got to keep on saying that same message until you're blue in the face, pretty much. (laughs) What I would say as well, that makes me think of, have you ever watched the film How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days? with Matthew Kate McConaughey and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it just makes me really think because that whole movie she's a columnist for this one particular topic and she's really sort of fighting to talk about more things but the, her boss was like no you've got to stick to this topic once you've kind of done that you can talk about whatever you want although when it gets to the movie she's like yeah but within you know <laughs> within your niche it's the same thing when it comes to your social media if you do want to grow it with your personal brand If you do want to grow on social media, what I would say is, and when you kind of, when we've analysed personal brands and the ones that have done particularly well and had that rapid growth with growing an online following or an online community, which then obviously follows you offline, it is genuinely because they've talked about that one thing and they've been specific with that one thing, but they've packaged it up in different ways, right? They'll kind of use analogies, they'll do demonstrations, they'll they'll mix it up, they'll give you different stories. And but it's over and over and over again. And sometimes some of the people that I've been following from like day one who have done that, they've been bored of their voice, even to the point where I've seen they've had comments saying, You've got not got any new content yet. Like you're people actually almost getting annoyed. But now they've earned that right because they've built that personal brand. They've got they've got to the point where they're so big. Well, yeah, if they want to talk about confidence and if they want to talk about all these different things, they kind of can at that point because they've earned that right. And I think sometimes, you know, we work with a lot of of women who they're like, oh, I've got so many, like, I'm, I'm so multidimensional. I've got so much to give. I've got, I don't want to just stick to one thing. And of course, I think especially as women, we are, we're multifaceted and we want to talk about all these things. But if you're genuinely serious about your business, if you're serious about your personal brand, especially in the earlier years just stick to really becoming an expert in that one thing and you genuinely will have rapid growth it will happen I want to go back to what you said about that person that you were following who was you know very bohemian and then all of a sudden she had like a brand new like image or like a new brand so for somebody who is looking to rebrand or like reinvent themselves, like how do you recommend to do that? Because I feel like that's another thing that people are afraid to do. It's like they get so stuck, but then they no longer align with that brand that they've created. So what mm-hmm. would be your recommendation on that? And how do you think the best way to go about that is? Because even you said, you're like, do I, you're like, I'm not sure if I want to follow her anymore. Like, I'm, I don't know what to expect. So I think that was like a very interesting thing to kind of chat about. I wonder, you you almost need to think about the goal in mind. So is it the fact that you're not aligned to the brand that you've created? Or is the audience that you've built, is that the same audience that you still want to serve? And if it's not, then it doesn't really matter at all. I think it's doing it in a way that if you want to keep that same audience, it's moving the brand in the direction that they're in. So if you imagine when we were watching Taylor Swift or someone younger, when we were younger, we were at a very different stage of life. And now she can come out with songs that are more uh, representative of where she is in her life. And it's going to, you know, it's going to attract me still. Um, So I think taking into consideration your target audience is going to be key here. Are you thinking about completely changing it? Are they growing with you or are you trying to find someone completely new? And I think that's where I would sort of probably start. Um, Pascal, you could probably take on... I get quite strict don't I I'm like you've got to be consistent because I think the only thing I would say I think everything that you just said Kate is true if you're kind of doing it in alignment with the brand growing and you're still kind of catering to the same audience at their different stages fine however we also have people who are like oh it doesn't feel right anymore so I feel like I need to change my colors but sometimes sometimes (laughs) we just need to remove the feelings out of things a little bit Because actually, from a business point of view, you know, if McDonald's or Virgin or Charlotte Tilbury kept changing their colours and changing their messaging all the time, they wouldn't be successful. Sometimes you just need to stick with things, I think, anyway. And I find that really hard because I think I'm such a multifaceted person 
and there's so many different sides to me that sometimes I'm like oh I feel like I want to show this side of me today and that's like but actually when you've got a goal in mind you do sometimes just have to be a little bit more street when it comes for a business if you're like an influencer and you're just doing it because you're influencing and you're promoting certain products and you're doing from that point of view that's very different and I think sure but when you're thinking it at it from a business point of view you do need to be a little bit more streamlined I think but you know there's sort of different viewpoints on it I think it's really I think where most people want to change their brand is when they and they come to us a lot and say this I really want my brand to grow up and I want it so and I think it's a case of maybe they were into the kind of pretty pinks and now they want to sort of make it a little bit more uh, luxury feeling and sometimes it's taking elements from your old brand and then just tweaking them slightly so with mine I had a lot of like nudie kind of pinky colors and then I infused a little bit of um, a very dark gray kind of blacky color just to kind of make it feel like a little bit more grown up so that might be another way is you just tweak a few things mm-hmm. so you're not changing the whole thing so you feel like you're a completely different person maybe it's just changing one or two things so you just it's a it's a transition and you can evolve over time because you certainly do evolve as a person so and at the end of the day it is personal branding it's completely personal you've got to expect there to be changes but I just don't think you want to do a polar opposite because that's when it can be quite jarring we were a bit like what (laughs) when we saw that what's going on (laughs) yeah yeah I love that you brought up Taylor Swift too, because I feel like she has done this beautifully. Her personal brand and reputation is so spot on. And I was actually listening to how to not lose a customer and then how to not lose an employee. But he talks about in his book, Taylor Swift, how she really has positioned herself with her fans, like going out of, you know, above and beyond to do things like sending her fans gifts and like doing all these things to really build that you know, reputation, that personal brand of her being kind and like all these things. But she has essentially kept the same brand, but started at such a young age and has continued to evolve her brand and grow with her brand, but has been consistent with those main key components that really make her who she is, right? So I really love that you explained it in that way. Yeah. And actually just very quickly on that, I think your values as a person, they don't normally change. So I think Mm -hmm. it's, and this is what we do a real deep dive in the exercises. It's like understanding what is absolutely at the core, like what are your values? And again, like you say with Taylor Swift, obviously that's a big part of her value structure. So I think as long as your brand stays true to those values, you can, yeah, you can definitely tweak stuff, but Mm -hmm. keep it to those values. (laughs) <laughs> okay so tell everyone how they can find you and how they can work with you you can find us obviously on azori studio on instagram and kate and i have our personal accounts too which is linked in the bio but also like i mentioned earlier we have the personal brand playbook which is essentially everything we've spoken about today but there's just like a real deep dive people can kind of go through the questions in there there's checklists there's a few nice little exercises that you can do in there to really help you build your personal brand get that clarity and obviously if you want to take it to the next level then you can contact us but yeah we will give that little gift (laughs) away today perfect thank you for being here I think that the information that you shared today is so valuable and I always love talking about personal branding because I feel like it really is a missing key component And I feel like for the younger stylists who do listen to our episodes that the sooner you really figure out your personal brand, your values, and really get that going, the faster you'll find success. And I think that goes for any industry. Thank you so much. Yes, thank thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Elevate podcast. If you loved this episode, it would mean the world to me if you would leave a review on Apple Podcast or wherever you listen. The Elevate podcast is hosted by me, Patricia Nowakowski, and is produced by Opulent Beauty Pro. To receive my free business guides, visit opulentbeautypro.com backslash free or click the link in the show notes. You can find me on Instagram at opulentbeautypro or at Patricia underscore Nowakowski underscore OBS. If you love this show, please consider subscribing and we will see you next week.